Sheep's in the middle, the cows in the corn. Now is the time for a child to be born. He'll laugh at the moon and he'll cry for the sun. And if it's a boy, he'll carry a gun. Sang the crow on the cradle. And if it should be that this baby's a girl, never you mind if her hair doesn't curl. With rings on her fingers and bells on her toes, and a bummer above her wherever she goes, sang the crow. You people at home, everybody here, we're very, very fortunate to have each other. Thank you so much for being here. The proceeds from this, from this event are split between relief efforts in Japan and aiding grassroots groups in the United States and around the world opposing nuclear power in their communities. The call went out to, uh, to many friends, people we knew, people we didn't know yet, to do these concerts. And in rock and roll, very often the people have their schedules planned a year, sometimes even more than that, in advance. So the people you see in the show today are people who are able to jump in and uh, gladly who had their schedules free and who could do this. But there are quite a few other people who aren't here today who I think you can expect to see join concerts such as this one in the, in the future and in the coming, coming years. Well, we feel as though there should be shows like this in communities all around the United States. I hope you have the chance to see the energy village that was set up here on your way in. And I'm somebody that prides myself in a, I have a passion and an interest in alternative energy, but there's all kinds of stuff out there I had no idea had progressed to that point. I'm very, very happy to have visited that yesterday when we did sound check. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a really good friend of mine, a young musician who's, uh, I, I've been listening to his album uh, in the months before its release. It's only being released now. I just got through touring in Spain and England with him, a very fine songwriter and a great musician. Would you please welcome Jonathan Wilson. When Jonathan was sound checking this particular song, I wasn't gonna be a part of it. It was just him and Jackson singing. But the song is so beautiful, I walked up to him and I didn't really, I don't really know Jonathan. I said, there's no way you're gonna keep me from singing on this song. No way in hell. How's everyone? I'm so happy to be here uh, on a great day, but for a great cause. A hundred blowing up in the headlines We've seen it all before The powers of killing the purpose For some
I'm personally glad that he's back in the ranks of the musicians. I checked his calluses when he was in office, and it was sad. You could tell he hadn't been playing at all. Probably the hardest working man in Congress, if not the hardest working man in show business. This is our good friend, John Hall. Thank you. Nice picking. Great band, wow. Great singers. Great audience. This next tune, I'd like to uh, invite my friend Guy Davis to come out and play some harmonica. It's a song from the, uh, there he is. Song from the Orleans Waking and Dreamy album. This is a guy we've known for a long time. Every one of us up here has done shows with this man. He's probably the reason we've been able to do as many benefits in the public interest as we have. We get the credit because we're the ones uh, who are the most visible. But this is a guy that's produced, I mean, and I don't know, I don't know how, what the number might be by now. It's certainly got to be a thousand, possibly more. But this is the guy that I met I met in New Mexico when he still lived in New Mexico. One day he woke up in New Mexico when he saw a smudge on the horizon, realized that if he didn't go to work, that the pollution that was happening in the cities was gonna find its way to where he lived in the pristine North New Mexico wilderness and decided to move back to the city and go to work. And uh, he's one of the co-founders of Musicians United for Safe Energy. And he's the, one of the promoters of the show today. 
is our good friend. He's also the, the reason we are in such close contact with anti-nuclear groups and activists all throughout the country. Would you please welcome my good friend, Tom Campbell. While they're finished and setting up the stage here, just let me talk very briefly about what's going on out here. We have two energy fairs where you can actually walk up and see these machines happening that are providing clean, safe energy with a non-nuclear future. Over here on this side, Mobile Solar has brought a unit. It's about 24 feet long. It's got about 12 panels on it. And if you go and look at it, you'll see that there's a cord that's going from the solar collector right to the Shoreline 220 plug-in. Direct drive right into the system for this venue. There are wind generators, there are solar units that you can look at, and there's a whole lot of information about safe energy. Please go and visit the energy plazas. They're on both sides, and uh, it, it's really thrilling. There, we have safe energy groups that have come to visit with us today from Michigan and New York and from New Hampshire and from Massachusetts, from North and South Carolina, from Florida, from Georgia, from Tennessee, from Texas, from Colorado, from Utah, from Seattle, from Nevada, and from New Mexico. Pretty neat, plus about 10 groups from California. Go check them out. You, if you're from California, you can send a message today to your legislator saying to stop Diablo Canyon don't let it happen right at the booth that's over here that's done by Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility. Thank you for coming. Visit us. We'll talk to you later. And thank you, thank you, and thank you. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a woman who loves each and every one of you and is here to prove it. Please welcome Bonnie Ray. Such an incredible reunion for those of us that were on the Muse stage 32 years ago. I really feel it. I travel around the country and I know from all these incredible grassroots groups out there in our Echo Fair and all the groups that are working so hard for all kinds of safe energy, we're going to win. So here's to them. It's a miracle that those of us in this band and all of us have still survived this many years. I think it's incredible. And so proud to be on this side of the grass. Speaking of grass, glad to know we're in the Bay Area. It smells really good up here. That music palooza, there you go. Like all of us, we've all lost so many loved ones. inspire us to start Muse back in those years it was one of the co-writers of a book that became kind of a Bible for the movement, No Nukes. He coined the phrase No Nukes back in 1973 and 
was involved with the Seabrook and all those New England, the early fights all through the 70s, all these alliances, the Abalone, the Clamshell, the Seabrook, all those demonstrations. It's a mighty movement and we're gonna be able to put the death knell on this industry. I really believe it because solar and wind and all the alternative energies are zooming ahead and the rest of the world has picked up on it and we don't wanna be left behind. We can't afford, can't afford to. So I want to introduce my dear friend, my brother in Muse and in all things standing up for what's right. A great author, the latest book is Solartopia. He's on the radio, he blogs all the time, and he's the editor of our nukefree.org website. Won't you welcome Harvey Wasserman. Thank you. Is this the most beautiful woman that ever lived in the whole world? It's such an honor and a joy to be here. This is an incredibly beautiful place. How many of you are tweeting out there? If you're tweeting, do, do your hashtag at 4 Safe Energy. Use the number four. Also, text MUSE, M-U-S-E, at 80888 to donate 10 bucks. We need it. We are about, I'm, I'm here, I got three minutes. I want to tell you two simple things, two things to remember. Number one, we are about to bury this damn cursed nuclear power industry forever. But we need you. You are the people that can do it. I got the, I got, I was lucky. I was living on a farm in Massachusetts in 1973. They wanted to build a nuclear plant four miles from our house. We stopped them. You can go to where that nuke was going to be built and lay down and look at the sky. It's a nature conservancy. In California, you have four reactors, like Fukushima, that are on earthquake faults and that are in the tidal wave zone. Two at Diablo Canyon. You can see Diablo Canyon from the front porch here. Two at San Onofre, right on the ocean. Those nukes need to be shut down. We can do it. You can do it. You've heard about this eco-village. One of the great things about the anti-nuclear movement is you meet great people. The greatest people I've met in my life are part of this, this movement for safe energy. There are 104 reactors in the United States. There were going to be 1,000. Richard Nixon said there'd be 1,000 in the U.S. by the year 2000, but we stopped them. We killed 896 nuclear plants in this country. We've got 104 to go. We are very close. We are at a turning point in history. Nuclear power cannot raise its own capital. It cannot get its own insurance. It cannot deal with its waste problem. And it cannot deal with you if you go out there and join us and help shut these plants down. I know we can do it. The important thing to understand now, here in Silicon Valley, we are in the middle of an incredibly important technological revolution. Just as the 1990s brought on the internet, now in the, year, in, the two, in the new century, the new millennium, we are entering the age of solartopia, of a coal green powered earth. Solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, ocean thermal, sustainable biofuels, increased efficiency, mass transit, conservation. This is how we survive on this planet not only ecologically, we will not make it. We will not make it biologically on this planet if we don't go to Solartopia, if we don't get rid of these nuclear plants. But this is also the key to our economy. We are in Silicon Valley, which invented the computer chip. We now have photovoltaic cells, which will be on every vehicle, every building, every parking lot, every cell phone, every piece of equipment that we have will be a Solartopian one. And this is where the future are, of our economy is. So two quick messages. Shut nuclear power. Get us to a green-powered Earth. Come to the Eco Village. Thank you very much. And no nukes. so long. It is my supreme pleasure to welcome a man who's been my brother since we met in 1970 and I did my first national tour opening for him in 1974. Two bands on one bus, one woman. 
This is a great job. Won't you welcome my dear friend and one of the strongest advocates for the causes I care the most about, one of the greatest artists in the world, Jackson Brown. back in 79 this is that was 32 years ago they're coming up on their 40th anniversary they hail from all over the United States they are such an incredible group to uplift your spirit enliven your hearts inspire us all won't you welcome my friend sweet honey and the rock Yonder come is a room. Smith. She is from Green Action in Japan. And although you might not know what MOX fuel is, you should know because it's the fuel that has plutonium in it. Not just uranium, but plutonium. And when you hear the word recycling, that means that they're putting the plutonium into the reactor. For 10 years, she kept them from putting the MOX fuel in Unit 4 at Fukushima. Please welcome. Eileen Miyoko Smith. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And the sky, the sky is so blue, and the, the trees are so beautiful, and the air is so clean. And um, I just came back from Fukushima a week ago. 
uh, the coastline all along the northeast of Japan. The towns and villages are devastated and the people displaced. And in Fukushima, after three meltdowns, the accident continues. We're still having afterquakes, aftershocks, and it's really scary because if those spent fuel pools go, there'll be unspeakable devastation. Um, everything in Fukushima is contaminated with radiation. Um, the hills, the agricultural land, the cities. And in your home, as you sleep, you're breathing in radioactive contamination. Your children are being exposed to radiation. Families are splitting up because the mother has to take the children to a different place in Japan while the father stays on inside the contamination, continues to work so that there could be food put on the table. The parents are not staying silent. In Japan, even babies are allowed by the government to be contaminated. But what the parents are doing is they're coming down in busloads to Tokyo and we confront the Japanese government. We've had so many meetings like that, I can't even count them. It's like a battle. And after each one, it's exhausting, but we keep doing it. And we won't be able to succeed and get more people out of there unless we get international help, the world, the eyes of the world upon Fukushima. And you can help us too, because there's a petition out there and the Safe and Clean Energy Village, all those wonderful booths. And at the Nuclear Information Resource Services booth, you can sign a petition for saving these Fukushima children. And all of us in Japan and all of you here, we have something in common, and that's that we have nuclear power plants in the same place we have earthquake faults. And I've heard people in Fukushima worried about San Onofre and Diablo Canyon. Most of the radiation in Fukushima went out to the Pacific Ocean, whereas for San Onofre and Diablo Canyon, it comes inland into really populated areas. And we worry about that. And together we can stop these nuclear power plants. In Japan right now, we have 39 shut down since Fukushima and only 15 to go. And we're gonna keep those that are shut, shut down. And we're gonna shut down the other 15. And together we can do it. Let's do it together and come back and celebrate no more nuclear power. And thank you so much. And you're wonderful. I wish we could do something like this in Japan. This is like a dream. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so very proud to be here amongst you all. You are obviously a part of the solution and not the problem. Fantastic. Well done, all of you. When we were putting this show together, Jackson and Bonnie and John Hall and I wanted the next generation of musicians because, quite frankly, I'm almost 70 years old and how long have we got left? From your mouth to God's ear, as Shelley says. When we asked this next man to come and play, he accepted immediately. A brilliant musician, a brilliant writer. Would you welcome, please, Jason Mraz?
He was living on the sidewalk, just living no business at all. There was something to this man who had seen it all. He wasn't looking for a handout, he didn't want my money neither. Tired of speaking to the wall, said everybody needs to talk. Oh, oh. I think it's very obvious to everyone with a brain that the future of the automobile industry is the electric vehicle. And you've probably seen out there at the Eco Village that fantastically sexy Tesla Roadster. And in October of next year, they're bringing out a sedan and they're working on one of those electric cars that we can all afford. A lot of people in this business talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. The man that I'm about to introduce to you talks the talk and walks the walk. He's the CEO of Vantage Point Capital Partners. This is my friend, Alan Salzman. I am really excited to be here and see thousands of people from all over the Bay Area come out and show our support for the tragedy in Japan and the Japanese people, and supporting clean and safe energy across the planet. And I want to, on behalf of Vantage Point, my partners, all the entrepreneurs and innovators, both in Silicon Valley, a lot of whom are here today, and across the globe, thank you. The musicians, the organizers, and all of you for coming out and showing support that we can and will move to clean and safe energy environment. Thirty-two years ago, when we did the first series of concerts, these guys were right there. Would you please welcome the Doobie Brothers! Thank you so much. Woo! We got some friends we want to bring up here to sing this tune with us right now. Bear with us for a moment, we'll get everybody out here. Cosby, Stills, and Nash. Bonnie Ring. Jackson Brown. Anybody wants to sing along with the rest of us, that's all right too.
in, in my view, it's something, it's a responsibility that we all share in. Because as long as the wheel of power and those who control energy, those who control foreign policy, those who control this world are motivated more by a profit margin than they are by the people and the environment that we live in, we're going to continue to have disasters like we saw in Japan, disasters like Chernobyl, disasters like future disasters we can't even imagine. Um, it's my hope that, uh, it, you know, on the one hand, we've identified some of the villains. On the other hand, we all have culpability because it's our responsibility to put our hand on the wheel of history and wrest it away from those sons of bitches who will do anything to this planet in the name of short-term profit. So until that day, until that day when Jackson Brown and Crosby, Stills and Nash and Bonnie Raitt sit on some presidential commission deciding energy policy, it's up to you and me, brothers and sisters, to turn this thing around.
must have a code that you can live by. And so become yourself. Yeah.